Cool. Looks like we got a fist band starting out, and I am your co-host, Primal Phoenix. Along with me is Chronostasis, and we're just going to go ahead and start off with the picks and bands. Chrono, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey everybody. I'm uh, Chronostasis, and uh, I shot cast stuff. <laughs> Uh, Aki, you want to enlighten us a little bit on the picks and bands since I personally don't really know much about either team, uh, unless Chrono does? Not too much either. But it looks like already we have two bands out for the mid lane. Does it? The Zed bat is interesting because, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Gene Parmesan plays Zed uh, quite a lot in ranked. That's his main champion. So that means that he doesn't really have an answer if uh, Concordia were to pick Zed, and he doesn't want to pick it himself. What also surprises me is that um, it seems that Washington did not look and see that uh, the support for Concordia University mainly plays Nami. He has over, if I'm not mistaken, a thousand Nami games, or that may be over 800 games, I'm sorry. But definitely a lot of Nami games and they didn't ban that out, so we're gonna see how that plays out and see if it turns out to be a notable ban. It's a safe first pick. It's a relatively Absolutely. safe first pick. Yeah. Um, but we have Corky being picked up, which deals with it really nicely because the range post six makes you pretty safe versus bubbles. And I don't know much about bottom lane, so if you know about it, by all means. <laughs> no, I'm just extrapolating. But no, I, I <laughs> haven't seen this matchup in particular, but I'm just extrapolating on what, what the player would want to do in that situation given this matchup. But we'll have to see what the other two picks are first. Indeed we should, and it seems we have a Lee Sin on Washington side. Uh, Lee Sin working very well in this jungle, this meta on patch 4.20. Uh, very strong, is able to get both of his ganks with a camp and then go straight to ganking, which a lot of junglers at the moment just can't do, such as Kha'Zix, since he doesn't have a lot of sustain and it seems he's going to be locked in. Kha'Zix is going to have to get both his buffs with a camp, maybe another one, and then base, and then try to gank it or roam around and see what he can do. But, I don't know, we'll see what happens. We have Thresh being hovered over here. That's interesting, because I don't think Thresh is especially good against Nami. Nami wants to be in that mid-range, which is where Thresh brings himself um, with any hard engage. And it's a little bit weird into Corky, but at least it does provide a lot of sieging power. It also does uh, very well for whenever Kha'Zix goes in so he can put down the box, possibly stop that mobility he has in order to chase people down so he can't just go ahead and harass all of the uh, mm. back line. That's but true. Poppy being hovered over, that I don't know if that's a troll pick or not. I'm going to be extremely excited. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a horrible person. I'm so upset right now. <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> All right, we got Syndra being picked up. Uh, I can't read too much into this one. Uh, I don't know what the game plan is here, but this is an unusual pick as far as I know with this guy. Yeah, he doesn't play a lot of Syndra. Doesn't play a lot of Syndra. You said he plays a lot of Assassins. However, Syndra does mm. have extremely high burst potential. Yeah. Drop two balls on the ground, pick up the last one, drop one more on yeah, someone. Definitely. And you can take him down. Oh. That's true. Using mm. those bands and picks accordingly to uh, take away any resource you can from the enemy team. Absolutely. It, the only opposition I have with that is that if I, Gene Parmesan is the mid laner, I believe, mm -hmm. if he can play a well enough Syndra since he's so used to all of the assassins. Well, we're just going to have to see what happens. 
as a, somebody who plays assassins and likes them a lot, Syndra is pretty comfortable to play. You, it, it's pretty much the same thing. People would call her an assassin a lot of the time, but she's really just a mage. That is true. Uh, it seems Ziggs and Lucian being locked in on the other side, looking like they have a very strong siege comp, actually, with the Malkai for defense, or it would be going in if they are far ahead. Is the bird uh, the word here? The bird is definitely the word. Come on, give me that Azir. Quit messing with me. Top lane Azir, man. <laughs> no, for real, top lane Azir. Against a Malkai, I think that might be able to work. He'll be able to harass him down with his W, with his auto attacks. Uh, actually, yeah, if you engage on him, mm, actually, no. No, I don't think so. I think Twisted, <laughs> Twisted Advance and um, Maokai's Q provides just too much CC. Yeah, that's a much better choice. Oh, uh, absolutely. Maokai uh -huh. can bully people pre-6 pretty easily, and Azir doesn't have anything to uh, clear waves if Maokai were to push. Lissandra definitely does, so. That is true. However, Lissandra doesn't, um or not Lissandra doesn't, uh, they have a lot of AP with the Lissandra, the Corky, mm. the Syndra. That's just a lot of magic damage being put out. And yeah, Corky is an ADC with all of his auto attacks, but he does do magic damage with all of his abilities. So, On the other we'll hand, see. yeah, Concordia's team is fairly well balanced, actually. I'm pretty curious to go uh, to know how the sieging is going to go uh, in this situation you have like a lot of wave clear on both sides so we're going to be looking more um, at what the hard engages are going to be and um, if Concordia is going to be successful at uh, jumping onto Corky before they can get onto Ziggs because that's, that's their most overtime damage dealers that's true, and also if uh, we'll see who gets possibly out-rotated, because mm. it does seem that uh, Washington State can, if they need to, just completely burst down a turret with Lee Sin and Corky with the Trinity Force, and then Lee Sin's auto-attack procs can probably put a lot of heavy damage on a turret if they're able to do it fast enough, but Concordia at the same time also has a very, very well seeding comp, so we're just going to see what happens they do have a lot of strong team fights on both sides. Well, with the Lissandra AoE and the Corky Poke that he also offers. I don't know. It's going to be a fun game. Oh, God.
Right, looks like we're in game. Yes, it is. It seems we have Concordia on the blue side with Ngenks We Trust going top lane, PVE in the jungle, Silent Reaper is support, Flurpy being the ADC, and Puzzled being the mid laner. And then we have George Washington University, YS Tang, the AD carry. And Gene Parmesan, we were wrong. He is not the mid laner. He's going to be the jungle on Lee Sin. Uh, we have It's Immortal playing top lane Lissandra. And Clumsy Kid on Thresh. And Monster in a Bush playing Syndra in the mid lane. Um, all five of them right now are uh, running past their blue. And blue is painting their tri bush. So maybe some early action about to start. We will see whenever it unfolds. Flurpe possibly being caught out oh. here. Nah, gonna get a little bit of her ass off. Nothing big. <laughs> yeah. Almost not, though. Uh, not quite in range for the Thresh hook, so nothing's gonna come of it. And unfortunately, other than that, they don't have too much um, catch potential, unless Lissandra takes her W. But I don't. No, she already took her Q. So. Never yeah, much. that would be yeah. pretty bad to do in lane if Lissandra started W. Maokai could harass quite a bit off of that. Yeah, exactly. Looks like a good ward being placed in the mid lane. Go ahead and uh, catch them in case they're doing any sneaky business. It looks like they're just going to be defending the red right now. Um, but meanwhile, blue team staying close to either side. I not sure if they saw them traverse that time through the mid lane. Hmm. But it's gonna. I don't think they did. No, it's gonna be a ground start anyway for Lee Sin, which is interesting. I think Krug would be uh, a safer start because of his attack speed. I agree. Uh, he also could have started blue and then um, immediately gone in for a level two gank, possibly a mid or bot lane, just to uh, do a little bit of damage, but. We'll see. Yeah, like I said, um, Nami is going to be countering <laughs> quite a bit uh, of Thresh's uh, advances. Thresh can't really advance on her uh, normally. She's just going to knock him up and or slow him uh, with her Tide Collar Blessing. Um, but otherwise, if she hooks her in, uh, she just sets up a, um, a bubble onto Corky, which is even more dangerous. So right now, it looks like that lane is just showing that the matchup is just being dominated uh, by Concordia. Hmm. Uh, it's the exact opposite going on in mid lane, as to be expected. It seems that Syndra is going to go ahead and start bullying out Ziggs, definitely, in these early levels. Uh, not really going to talk about the CS advantage because it doesn't really matter at the moment, but it does seem that she is able to pick up all the minions, oh, throw them down. A bubble going on to Corky, but the play is going to get uh, Nami going backwards, but uh, nothing coming up from that. Flood action going on in the bot lane. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see more from that. Um, but in the top lane, looks like a little bit of a stalemate. Um, I think the sustain from Maokai is probably going to help him more than Lissandra's pass through. Ooh, now we landed another bubble going in. Gonna go ahead and get off a Q from Lucia. Miss the hook, however. Nice trade from Concordia. Uh, setting themselves up in the early game to uh, start snowballing their advantage, especially in the CS lead. 
I think that's uh, that's what's going to happen here. Absolutely. Looks like in ganks we trust in PvE are going to try to get off a gank in the top lane, but Lissandra's E just letting her get away just before the, in the nick of time. And that was a great E. She threw that um, while Maokai was in transition with his Twisted Advance, and as the snare ended, she was still able to get to her second position. It looks like Puzzle going in pretty hard on Cinder right now. Nothing going to come from it, just getting off a lot of good harass. The looks top like Top Link's going to get a gank. Lisa oh. missed the queue, but burning nice. in ganks flash, so absolutely a successful gank. Thankful for that minion wave, but we do see Kha'Zix <laughs> moving up there. Kha'Zix may be looking to do a little bit of counter jungling if he can't get anything from what's on here. Oh. We'll see a threat, a hook being Lin in bot lane. Uh, yeah, the camera gonna go ahead and switch over to top lane. It seems that Lee Sin is gonna be caught out in the jungle. Two flashes burn. First blood. First blood. Concordia University with the Kha'Zix taking away the big goal. Great job by PvE. Great instinct to know that Lee Sin would probably go for his nearest camp. And uh, just, you know, getting in the head of the enemy jungle. So it's looking really, really nice and healthy for Concordia right now. They're uh, dominating on many areas of the map. Seems pretty active game. A lot going on right now. It seems Zig's actually pushing Cinder out of lane. Gonna go ahead and start building up a nice little CS lead. Only four at the moment, but that is a big deal with a Cinder versus a Ziggs. Cinder should be on the be doing a lot better than that, so. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. We do have blue team uh, painting out Lee Sin. Uh, they know that he's near his toad right now, so they're expecting bot lane, but they're still pushed up quite heavily, so let's see if they're going to spot him out here. Yeah, looks like it. They just popped a ward. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop a ward in that river brush so he can't jump to it, but, but it seems that they're going to get the very nice bubble, stopping that gank entirely. However, Nami did have to flash, so still a successful gank. That's right. Seems Maokai and Lissandra are just going to trade off a little bit. Maokai getting ahead of the trade with the double door and start with the Ruby Crystal, making them quite a little bit healthier. Lissandra going to go ahead and opt in for that Fiendish Codex, try to get some CDR under her belt. Yeah, Maokai um, is going to sustain a lot better than Lissandra if he continues to trade with her. Um, but Lissandra can eventually, once. Oh, it doesn't look good for her right now, though. Uh, no, not at all, actually. But uh, I'm not sure Maokai had a sapling there to finish her off. Nah, um, he had just thrown it for the engage and just taken a lot of damage. Lissandra well, gonna have to port. She might have to use her teleport. Uh, let's see if she does. This is Maokai's really smart. Is gonna be up. From Maokai going double Doran's ring into a ruby crystal. Ooh, hold on. Looks like a bot lane, a bubble landing. Perfectly gonna see if they can get the Corky. No, they're not. Thresh landing the hook. He's gonna take down Flurpy. Great job by Thresh. Absolutely. Oh, but the Ziggs bomb, he's not looking. Oh. And Puzzle takes out YS Tang in the bottom lane, but nonetheless, it's a one for one, <laughs> and it's a very nice job from Clumsy Kid. Uh, landing that short range hook very quickly to uh, secure that kill. We do see Lee Sin, though, walking up in the top lane. It's a pretty tanky Maokai, and he's level 6. Already he just used down his Sandra. W. Let's see. No, he's not going to be able to make it out of this one. Definitely Might be not. able to let Lissandra take it. No, Lee Sin just going to go ahead and grab it because his ulti was up. Might have been able to put a little bit too much damage on him. That was great play by Lee Sin. Seeing Kha'Zix just having ganked in the bottom lane and being very low, he knew that he was relatively safe just to gank this lane. And then Maokai's twisted advance, like you said, basically secured the kill for themselves. And it looks like Concordia going to go ahead and try to take this dragon. Uh, knowing that Lee Sin is top lane, he's low, there's going to be absolutely no contest from this. Yep, looks like a very clean dragon. Um, going to be 11,000 gold to 10,000, not that much of a lead. Can't say a lot about that, but it seems Concordia is ahead uh, just a little bit. Yeah, right now the CS though looking pretty even across the board. Um, and nobody really has much pressure on turrets. I would say bot lane has the most pressure on this turret. 
But I think mid lane would be very easy to take down for Concordia, knowing that their bot lane is winning and Ziggs has that tower taking um, pressure with his passive. Seems like Pink Ward already being placed into uh, Washington's blue buff, making sure that there are no wards around, and he did pick up the ward for the blue buff. See if he's going to go ahead and give this Odor to Syndra. Looks like, no, he's just going to go ahead and take that. So... We do have a pain know. in the bot lane. Lee Sin coming through here. It looks like we might see the same gank come out with the um, the lantern over the wall. But, Lee Sin uh, is six. Sophie, oh, hooking right into a caster mini. Yeah, blue, uh, that is blue. a pretty deadly gank, though. Yeah, blue team seems pretty aware, but nope, he's not going to follow up on that stone here. Makai did just walk over and go ward Lee Sin's red buff. Um, let's see if they. Figured that out and get out. He was pinged out, so they know that something's going up amiss. Maybe think that Kyle Six is going to be there, but that's a really smart move from Maokai. That that allows him to know that bot lane is safe to take because the tower is very low, uh, and the bot lane seems to just have so much um, ability to be aggressive because of the the matchup that they have. But Corky just hit six, so his clear time or his um, wave clear ability is a, a lot higher now. So that should help them defend this for a little bit longer, but it's not going to matter, I don't think. Seems that uh, Nami is actually maxing her E, so Lucian can take out a little bit more harass with his double autos. Um, it's quite a good thing to do. It provides a qu well, it provides a lot more extra damage and some magic damage. Uh, it's very hard to lag. Ooh, seems that <laughs> Kha'Zix is going in for the red buff. Oh, I'm getting all nice tied right now. Great jump over the wall from Kazix, but first there's a wave in the bottom lane. We do have Furphy getting exhausted, but Fresh almost going down. He's going to protect himself with the shield. Forky going down surely from this note. His Valkyrie away is going to make him safe, but is that the end? No bubbles uh. going to land, <laughs> but he's going to get distracted thinking he can kill Nami. That was most likely a mistake. Running would have been just as good or better. I agree. Silent Reaper, though, did burn his flash trying to get the last couple of hits off of Thresh and didn't succeed. Um, back to the top lane over where the red buff gank was. Seems Kha'Zix was able to go ahead and steal away that red buff. Um, looks like Kha'Zix and Maokai are going to go ahead and start pushing down on this turret. Maybe try to take the second turret of the game a little early. Force Lissandra to use her teleport. Don't know. I assume she's just going to go ahead and walk back in a lane and let the turret take quite a bit of punishment. I'm going to go ahead and look at the health right now. It is at 450. Going to drop down to about 400, maybe 375 or so after the minions start wailing on it. But the turret looking right for the picking. And Lee Sin looking mid lane. Ooh, the stun misses though from Syndra. Lee Sin coming in. He's going to get a kick on the Nami. And the ult coming off from Ziggs. Going to be avoided from Lee Sin. Looks like Lucent just gonna go ahead and smite Nami, take her down. Kha'Zix coming in with his upgraded wings, jumping over very far, gets the reset. Gonna see if they're gonna do anything with this. No, looks like they're just gonna walk under their turret. Oh, uh, this turret will fall scary. though. There are four people and they cannot defend this. Yeah, this is exactly what I mean. Bot lane won and when your bottom lane wins, rotations in the mid game are so much easier to make. And this is what ends up happening, especially when you have a pretty decent siege composition. And right now, we just saw the gold lead shoot ahead. The first is stunned out from Syndra, and Lissandra's in the middle, middle with her ultimate. Gonna go ahead and ult in. Kha'Zix jumping in. Gonna go ahead and get his reset on Lissandra. Maokai getting taken down, though. He is just not as tanky as he thought. Uh, gonna goodness. be a one for one. However, Concordia did put down a lot of damage on that turret. Maybe overstate, but... I don't know, still looking pretty well for Concordia. They do have a 3,000 gold lead right now. Yeah, that gold uh, lead shot up very quickly. It did. <laughs> it was at about 1,000 not two, three minutes ago, and now it is at 5,000, so... Quite a big difference. We do see Kha'Zix George... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. We do see George Washington University trying to press on this mid lane right now, but first, Lee Sin getting kicking our... Kicking Kazix rather, getting knocked up by the wave. Nami landing the great bubble Ziggs. 
making sure that he can't jump away. Looks like uh, Washington gonna go in with the little Sandra. Cinder ultimate taken out. Ziggs gonna go ahead and Ooh. cue Kha'Zix, and they're gonna get a three for one. That was a great trade by Washington. They just put themselves back in the game with that. The gold lead just gapped once again. Not only that, but that was just a great place. First, the gank coming out for Onto Fresh, on Fresh rather. And Maokai is surely going down very quickly from this. And Absolutely, gonna take a, gonna do a lot of damage though. But they're gonna be able to take this turret. No, they're gonna back off. Lucian's pushing bot lane. It seems they want to defend the turret. Top lane surely gonna be taken down from the top lane minions. And Dragon's up. Concordia could just go ahead and rotate to Dragon and pick up that second buff. Right now, yeah, definitely right now, Concordia has the advantage on the map. They just lost that last team fight, which was really punishing for them. The reason why they lost it is because they found themselves in a corridor with Syndra using her uh, EQ and or QE rather, and Lissandra using her full combo, which works so well. In uh, wow, but we do have Lee Sin actually. Just Lee Sin stealing and the dragon. Stealing that dragon. We thought it was gonna be for free, but that was just so casual. He just sort of walked up there. <laughs> Very well played. Looks like they're gonna go ahead and steal away their first round and get that 8% damage buff. This is really, a big deal. Really quite funny. Especially for the mid lane. I mid game. Mean, this is <laughs> this is like uh, so back and forth. They just took the dragon, which helps them immensely now. Now what red team needs to do is just find... Oh, it looks like Nami Wave coming out. They're gonna try to steal the blue buff. No, nothing gonna come of it. Ziggs actually stealing away the blue buff with a Q. Oh, uh, they do have... Maokai pushing alone in the top lane, but here comes Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix jumping in. <laughs> and just cleaning Nami up Nami getting fight. a double kill. Getting Corky over the wall when he flashed away, or when he Valkyried away. No, when he flashed away. It was a um, fight for George Washington University, but all of a sudden it's turned back on their heels. Concordia University came out with just blazing feet and just went for the objectives. And George Washington did not <laughs> see that coming. They were already low in the mid lane and were backing by the time that we were doing, like, Concordia was doing Dragon, taking the top lane. So it's looking really good for them right now. Um, that was Alpha. absolutely horrible for Washington State. They lost a turret, they lost three yeah. people, blue buff got stolen. They got the timers on that and they're still managing to place wards deep inside of their jungle. Get all the vision that they need so they can predict what's going on. Is Maokai going to get caught out here? Uh, it looks like it. Yep, uses his twisted advance. He knows he's dead. Thresh gonna go ahead and flay, maybe hook, make sure he gets locked down. And Corky gonna go ahead and pick up that kill. Very, very much needed kill. The CS difference for bot lane is very, very visible with 120 CS on Lucian and 92 on Corky. Uh, the item difference is just. You can tell immediately which side is winning. Lucian with a completed Infinity Edge, working on a Static Shiv, maybe a Phantom Dancer. Um, hopefully a Static Shiv there for more burst. Corky just now picking up his Trinity Force. One, three, and five to two, one, and five. So. And we have four turrets to zero, and that's really what this game has been all about. Uh, Concordia has been able to dominate lane, and from that, the towers have fallen um, very easily into the palm of their hands. So. That's giving them the massive gold lead that you see right now, or the massive gold lead at oh, this time. Oh, it looks like- oh, oh, the hook missing! So that sorry. would have been great for Washington State. They it, all could have dashed over the wall and blown up Cork, taking like out a large portion his, of their AoE damage. It, it seemed to like slice through his water balloon or backpack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lissandra being very antsy, eating into the entire team. Gonna have to defensively ult. Looks like she's gonna be taken down though by Kha'Zix. Flashing in, Lee Sin gonna go ahead and pick up Lucian. He is not gonna escape this, or is he? Yes, he will. We do have Corkido dealing a lot of damage on the side. It's gonna force, um, it's gonna force Ziggs back, definitely. What a very interesting trade. It was a one for one. Yeah, it looks like a, going way too far. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of mis miscommunication on the on the side of uh, George Washington University. Lissandra going in and then sort of walking to the side. You can see her pathing back and forward, like as if she's not sure. And then finally having to force her ultimate because of all the damage she was taking. So they were just sort of forced to engage at that point. Great uh, stun coming out from Lissandra. Looks like 
Well, Sonder is gonna go ahead and come in on the back, guys. Lock down two people. Maokai getting the kill, though. Will he be able to make out? It looks like no. Cross like is going in. I don't know about that. Definitely uh, not a good idea. He does get the idea. reset, though. Oh. I don't know if he's gonna get away from this. There is- Oh, Lucian coming in, gonna go ahead and use the calling. Maybe take out Cinder. He did just use his dash. No, he's not gonna get it. Oh, but- PVE with the flash void spike. Very well done. Better to sacrifice- Flurphy, however- Ah, oh, Flurphy is gonna be taken down with the exhaust. Almost got clumsy, kid, but... Definitely getting caught out. He should've backed out after that. Valiantly dying, but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, a little that bit was of, a three uh, for two though, that, or a three for one. That was not a good trade again. Um, yeah, right now we do have George Washington University coming up on kills. Um, however, the gold lead is still for Concordia because it is four turns to zero. But it's a little bit smaller now, so we do have uh, Corky free farming up in the top lane. And at this stage in the game, if um, Concordia doesn't start to uh, press their advantage even more, maybe even take an inhibitor. Uh, very soon, or perhaps the next dragon and Baron when it spawns, um, then they can find themselves in a lot of trouble because they do have the raw strength on George Washington's team. Corky, Syndra, and Lissandra deal tons of base damage, and the sieging has been 50 50, and the fights in jungle have been mostly for George Washington, so it's definitely not in Concordia's hands right now, and they can't be that cocky like they were just a minute ago. And it seems like they're gonna go ahead and try to. Gonna have the entire team take down the Skoda card. Silent Reaper getting caught out. They had it warded. I don't know what he was doing. Puzzled also gonna be taken down. Not before doing a ton of damage to wow. Corky and Lissandra. That damage. <laughs> uh, Concordia did get the Scuttle Crab though, so they do get the free ward, so they can watch Dragon. Dragon is gonna be up in five seconds. Both teams Washington still does have five stuff. people. Is Ingang gonna see. make a move here? It looks like he's walking up pretty close. It looks you know like they're just gonna low. go ahead and try to stall out the dragon. Lucian oh, Washington State gonna go ahead and start it. I don't think that's a good idea. The they're gonna take a, quite a bit of damage from this. Sandra going in, gonna go ahead and ult herself. He's on target. a lot of damage mitigation. In game for trust is gonna go in with his ult, take a lot of damage, absorb it all, lay it down. Wow, that damage is quirky though. His rockets deal so much burst damage. Absolutely. Oh, huh, it looks like a two for one in but favor of Concordia. This is not too bad for Concordia now because they have the healthier team at the moment. Uh, George Washington is forced to back off, so they're going to take this dragon, which is uh, definitely needed right now to close out this game faster. Uh, it seems PBE is just waiting on the outside so he doesn't take any damage. He's going to go ahead and queue that up. And they're going to get their second dragon of the game. PBE staying quite a bit, but it doesn't look like there's going to be any problem. I'm gonna go ahead and give the blue buff away to Puzzle. And, and that is the pushing power uh, dragon buff, so they'll be dealing more damage to minions. Uh, and they're camping this brush right now, it's pretty interesting. Maybe they'll uh, catch Sindra or Lissandra looking for a blue. Thresh did just use his red trinket. Um, curse you, directed camera, I wanna look around. Oh, there we go. Uh, nah, looks like they're gonna go ahead and get away from that. Watch you know there's something up. They don't see anyone on the map. They check Baron, they're not there. Oh, oh a beautiful hook landing from Clumsy. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Puzzled. It looks like he's gonna get taken down. Yes. Clumsy kid. Oh, right. nice. Another hook that has to be Mad Life. <laughs> nice like he's gonna job. tank oh. up a couple more shots that turn. PBE, oh. however, we're coming and gotta go ahead and take him down. The carnivorous Those creature. were excellent hooks. <laughs> I love how he always comes in at the end of fights and, and just causes these little chaos. So he's really funny <laughs> the way he plays. But uh, really, really nicely played from George Washington University. I mean, uh, just landing every skill shot. There wasn't much to be said other than that catching people out when uh, they didn't have vision or they were not being particularly safe, like we saw with Nami and like we saw with Ziggs. Um, but those fresh hooks, they've been... Lee Sin can be very... Lee Sin very versatile. Uh, you can use his ult to engage, to disengage, but he's also very good at picks because he, if he lands his Q, you get permanent vision of him for... 
as long as it's on there, and he can just go in at any time. Mm, and Corky fair. does also have his high amount of burst too, so and from they're apart, doing quite well. well. That's the key thing. Corky can still do a ton of damage in a pick composition from afar. But first looks like they're going to find Nami out here. A hook, oh, almost landing. But they're not going to hook onto that sushi just yet. <laughs> Looks like Lucian going to go ahead and throw out the calling. Take about three bars away from Corky's health. Nothing to even fret about at all. He's just going to go ahead and steal all that back up with his Bilgewater Cutlass. Cinder landing a nice E. Going to go ahead and throw out a Q for a little bit of harass. Sandra throwing out the E saying, nah, this is my side of the map. Y'all need to stay over there. We're in control right now. I think at this point, Concordia needs to maybe start investing more into magic resist. Uh, they seem to have just a lot of dam uh, problems with the damage coming out, and they seem to be catching themselves in the same situation, either in lane or in jungle when it comes to team fights. So just more raw stats is what they need to be looking forward to instead of damage, because they definitely do have the damage, I believe. Um, seems... They do have a, quite a bit of magic resistance, however, with Maokai having the Spirit Massage and the Merc Treads, uh, the Ziggs with rushing the Athenes. It's not much magic resist, but it's a little something. Nami also getting the Chalice of Harmony. Yeah, interesting stuff. Lots of uh, stain in the map power for her, I guess. But, um... Hmm. Looks like they are going to try to do as much poke as they can because in my opinion with Nami with the chalice she can go ahead and just spam out her heels and her ease possibly throw out a couple of bubbles every now and again but who do you think has the better siege comp between these two teams absolutely Concordia oh but first uh, Malachi, oh, wow. up? great catch by in ganks we trust finding thrust just a little bit too far from his team that was just great confidence from in ganks uh, Concordia recognized that George Washington is being a little bit too cocky, just staying there uh, with not enough people and the team being separated three to two. So, hmm. but uh, back to the seeking cop. Definitely, Concordia has the upper hand. They have Lucian who can Q, and his Q goes for so far. Get the double taps off on the turret. Yeah, it's uh, not time. good uh, if. This particular sieging comp, like we said, if they, they have the upper hand. Looks like they're gonna go in. The Sunder going in with her E and ulting herself. Looks like a very good job. However, Concordia just going in. PvE getting the doubles reset. Lucian getting exhausted though, Ooh. but it's not gonna matter. The double kill for Kha'Zix. That was just too fast. <laughs> Looks yeah, like it's gonna be a 4 for fast. 1 trade. A 4 for 1 uh, trade in the matter of a few seconds. Uh, does Ziggs have his bomb? No, he does not, unfortunately. So it's not gonna be an ace, but it looks like they're gonna take the inhibitor. I was just about to say, since uh, Concordia does have the siege advantage, I do agree with you. Uh, it's very punishing for this pick style comp, or mostly pick style comp, to be at their inhibitor turrets right now because they want to ideally be basically anywhere outside of their base because that's where they can do the most work, is in these tight corners. Or these tight areas, rather. Uh, seems Zix is gonna go ahead and steal that blue buff again, using his ult to clear all the waves down bot lane. Dragon's gonna be up in 25 seconds. Concordia is gonna be up in time. But watch team look, it's like they're gonna move down, they're gonna go ahead and pick up some good wards around it. I don't know if they have the timer or not. Um, no, they don't have the timer. They didn't have any wards at the time whenever it was killed. So, at they the have moment. a rough estimate, but... At the moment, George Washington University has got to be feeling a little bit desperate. It's 6-1 at the towers, and there's a 6k gold lead. The kills, though, are equal, and they might be given a little bit of confidence with that. But, oh, a stun coming out, though. Cinder having the flash after using her ult, not taking the lantern is too risky. The immortal being oh. too cocky, away. not using her ult. Tried to eat away, but it was just too slow. And Cordy doing a great job picking off the pick comp comp. Yeah, that was, <laughs> uh, it was interesting because uh, I definitely thought Cinder might have been able to just, you know, one shot that uh, Nami, but maybe didn't prepare enough falls or maybe just didn't have enough damage to one-shot uh, the Nami right now at this stage in the game. She does have her Mikhails, and she does have a little bit of health from Sidestone, so that could definitely help protecting her from that burst. 
And like you said, instead, the pick got, got picked. They got <laughs> counterpicked um, with Maokai just walking into the enemy team and forcing flashes. Super great job by Inganks. I really like his confidence on this champion. I do agree. How, <laughs> I think Cinder just didn't have enough balls on the ground to just feel right. too confident with that. Yeah, I, I think that's <laughs> probably what happened. She didn't prepare uh, two or three balls. Uh, it seems Lee Sin gonna go ahead and go in. I don't know if he meant to do that or not. Zix also with the questionable ulti. Uh, I guess it's just gonna stream off this, but Concordia using their poke comp with the Nami to heal them up, Zix to throw out all of his bombs and Maokai with his saplings and Concordia, again, yeah, they could just stay. Wow, they're they doing a very good this. job. They could with the super minions pushing in, and they're super strong. This is looking really, really bad for George Washington University right now. Uh, they are going to try and push them back, but not before they take the inhibitor though for free. Absolutely no success. Looks like Baron is an option from Concordia. They do have two inhibitors. Inhibitors. Uh, respawn at five minutes now. Um, so. Still quite we'll a see. few minutes on Dragon. Top seems to be okay, although there are two members of George Washington University going up to that area right now. Baron would be probably the best call at the moment. Um, Concordia did read that they were going to go ahead and try to push down top lane. They did ping it out because mm -hmm. their minions were going to be there. So it looks like. Puzzle's just gonna go off to his blue, and Silent Reaper's just gonna run up top lane, show a little bit of dominance towards Lee Sin, maybe clear some waves, get a little bit of money, you know. Supports need some gold, too. And speaking of supports needing gold, <laughs> Silent Reaper picked up a needlessly large rod and this... an amplifying tome. Yeah, Silent Reaper has 9,600 gold to uh, Clumsy Kids. 7,500, so quite a big difference there. A 2k <laughs> difference to be exact. Um, so yeah, Nami is just swimming in, uh, in AP money. But we do see the 80 carries though. Their gold, I mean, still uh, close to a 2.5k difference, but at least Corky came back up in the CS. So now he has to depend on his team to start taking objectives, but it might be too late at this stage in the game. It looks like they're going to take uh, the top tower fairly cleanly. It uh, looks like George Washington's a little bit scared oh, of them. Uh, Lissandra, God, I can't get her name right. Flashing in with her old, going to use the Zanyas too for more stasis. Maokai jumping wow, in on TS. Way. Yay! That it looks way. like it's going to be a complete 5 for 0. That's an ace. That's the 11,000 gold lead. The GG is being pulled out. Let's see. Are they going to surrender? Yes, they will. Washington State what a beautiful given game. in. Concordia just dominating force that game. That was a really exciting game. And actually, dominating, yes, but there was still quite a bit of back and forth. And that's what made the game really exciting.